almost a fiduciary obligation to um, trim trim your workforce accordingly. Um, if somebody is you know causing that difficulty, because it's it's only going to you know, take away and it's going to you know split the split the the mission, um, and, and it's it's not going to be an efficient way to do business. Um, All right. Thank you, Jen. Um, how about you, Buffer? Oh, this definitely, it's hard. I mean, views are, are somehow meant to be shared, but, and discussed, but I think there's a line when you can hurt people. Even like we all had some point that we say or think something controversial and and it could be related to a bunch of contexts, you know, and and things can happen, uh, change <laughs> along the time, and and then the context is lost, and and so is the the view. But uh, I guess just as everyone said, like if you are aligned with an organization and your personal views are not aligned with it, like you you either step out or <laughs> or just change your views, like and. I, I I actually just as, as you uh, my Twitter account I I I I actually stopped using it uh, like three four or five years ago because I'm um, actually <laughs> I was a political persecuted in my country I am still but I'm low profile right now and I I was political persecuted but I I haven't participating in any politics ever, <laughs> which is funny. Um, but I, I had to like delete a bunch of stuff from my Twitter and my Instagram uh, and those were like trying to defend myself and and somehow I was I was showing some uh, opposition or a political view or so and I thought well this is not something that is going to help me or anyone, so I, I just delete it. And it was a, and for me, it was a context of a very hard context that I was going through. And at the moment, I said things that it might be not um, share with the rest of the people, but it happened. And I deleted it. I deleted a bunch of stuff, and I move on. And I right now as a uh, personal mantra and weight of life. Uh, I just participate in things that are aligned with my values and principles, and that's it. <laughs> All right. If, All right. If, I, if I, I don't like it there, I just step out, and that's good. Uh, I'll pass it to Tam. Before, before you pass it on to Tam. Uh, welcome, Margarita, uh, and welcome, Gustavo, and Tam to the Chimita Spoken Group call. We are going through an uh, icebreaker question at the beginning of our call, and the icebreaker question is, uh, oh, well, she left. Uh, the icebreaker question is, how do you um, sort of uh, align your personal with your professional life in light of the situation with ENS that happened? And, like, how do you relate both aspects of your life and how will you handle it as a community? Um, so yeah, I will pass it on to Tam. That's my friend. I see them a little bit as two separate questions. I'd say how I separate my personal and professional life, I uh, have a very, very narrow band between my personal and professional life that really intertwix, intertwined a little bit, I'd say. Um, you know, bringing my kids to East Denver. <laughs> like, uh, so <laughs> my personal and professional life are just gonna gonna go skiing together or something. Um, I don't I don't know that. I mean, to some extent, my personal life is pretty private. You know, I, I'm a pretty private person, uh, and I think that I would say that. I uh, share things with colleagues when I feel trust and intimacy with them, and I feel that I can share things with colleagues. So 
uh, I'm with community, not just colleagues. And I tend to have a pretty wide, uh, open base level of trust and then can sort of close it as it's proven that uh, it's mis uh, misplaced. And for just the ENS stuff, I don't know how much I want to talk about it. I guess at the end, what, what I would say is what I saw was more was reactions to reactions. I just saw people reacting to other people reacting to other people reacting. And so much of it wasn't a reaction to what was happening in terms of like this one specific case and the facts related to this one specific case. It was how other people react were reacting to this thing. So it was like this sort of nested, you know, I don't know, like, can it be like a reaction chamber where <laughs> it's just like, and things are getting hotter and hotter and hotter because people are getting more and more angry. So I uh, started, my reaction was just to read a little bit, find the sources, right? Like, so what are, what is the thing that's upset? And then have my reaction to it was like, yeah, that's not, not, not so cool. Let's see what this person, like, let's take some time and cool down and see what this person has to say. And overall, I think it's super interesting. There's maybe the more interesting thing that I, Think was said about it was like this liquid governance like okay it's very interesting if you feel like somebody's not a good representative in the community you can undelegate your votes to that person right like in in this particular one case and it was very interesting to see that the votes flow out of his delegation like that was one thing then the other thing was seemed very reactionary and impulsive and I feel less comfortable that there was like a reactionary impulsive termination. Um, it, I think personally, it made me think of the quiet period in Tao voting, which is like, if you can see that things are getting very controversial, an extra 24 hours and then an extra 24 hours just to get let people like get calm, get level headed. And we didn't really see that, you know, it was just like, you know, escalating, 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 termination. You know, it's just like, I would have, I would have felt more, I guess I would have felt, I guess I would have rather have seen that there was some moment of calm, cool headedness. And then that, that outcome, rather than it be, um, just sort of like a, a impulsive outcome it felt like. I, but I don't know, and I'm not involved in any of it, and I don't know any of the people involved in any of it. So it's sort of like, I mean, aside from like Alicia and Lefteris, I feel like there are two people who came out as like the superstars who were like calm, reasonable, and um, really clear sighted. Uh, and so I just, noted how much more admiration I have for the people that reacted in this very emotional period with like calm, cool headed, uh, rationality. Thank you, Ken. I don't, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I talked a lot. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> it's okay. Shall I pass and, um, to, um, oh, sorry. To, no, no. I was going to, you can try. I was going to pass to Ben's, but I'm not sure you were here to catch the, okay. Um, I will pass it on to Lugara for you. Just, just let me turn it over here. Yes, uh, just a very uh, simple intro question. How do we articulate our personal life with our professional life? And how do we, how we use handle situation of the ENS context? If you, if you don't have context, the link is on the agenda. Uh, basically, it's uh, all tweets surfaced back from uh, the director of mm -hmm. operations of ENS. And um, they were, um, yeah, the community responded in a way. Uh, we had different responses, but basically the exercise that I want to bring to the table is as a community and, uh, and as a working group dedicated for the community, how how we can learn from this and how we can sort of, you know, learn how not to react or learn how to handle the situation. So, yes, Dr. Well, I have my own version of that. So... So uh, a thing happened that was, um, I guess, uh, hidden from me for over a year and um, was a misunderstanding and miscommunication, a kind of uh, a trusted seed. Durgadas is a trusted seed with an asterisk 
kind of an approach. And then what I uh, connected with emotionally with that was, you know, a lot of feelings of, geez, why did it take so long to figure all these things out? Why did it, you know, like, like, where's all the transparency? Where's all this stuff that we're always talking about? And so what that did was surface for me a lot of, um, uh, you know, you naturally want to react against that stuff, right? But then you have to say, um, you know, there's a stimulus and there's a response, right? So you have this stimulus and you're like, okay, so, you know, is this just a, a problem with me? And I started looking at the community and what I sort of found was that there were some fundamental structural problems. So for me, what I would do in terms of like thinking about this with my gravity hat on is that we didn't have, um, not, not speaking about my thing, but thinking, speaking about this ENS thing. So, okay, these things surface. Now here's what everyone's reaction. So there's a stimulus there. Somebody said some, I imagine, unsavory something or other, and then everyone's just like, you know, reacting to that. And then instead of having any culture of de-escalation or way to sort of mitigate that or any kind of educational process by which there was a, um, uh, a community culture of saying, now, hang on, let's, at each point where everyone's reacting, um, let's actually stop that process in the middle and or try to evaluate if there are structural problems with our, and for me, a structural problem is we fail to educate people as to conflict resolution mechanisms and so on, right? Uh, we have similar structural problems. We have we have entirely too centralized uh, 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 things, which is, I think, what led to my own personal misunderstanding. Do you see what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to say is that um, I feel like uh, every situation, you know, there, there I, can I just share my screen? Because this helps with me explain my narrative uh, about this. And I say this a bunch, but I just want to make sure people understand that I'm, I'm being consistent. <laughs> um, so, so the the the, pro, the thing that I see happening over and over, right, is we have this mature individual thing, right, and we have a certain amount of. Um, d development, right? So what we do then is we say along this middle line, we're going to connect with the relationships, norms, boundaries, and customs of the group that we're dealing with. But then there are also systems which, that are that are structural in nature, right? That came out of these invisible webs of culture. And then what happens is there's a kind of um, there's a kind of a pendulum swing that goes between the individuals connecting with the, the we, and then they connect with the social system environment. And then that social system and environment then pings back and, and then the pendulum swings back across and has an effect on the individuals who are participating in that group, right? And so what I'm basically making an observation of right now is that I feel like um, in many ways we've, uh, we've in our, and I, I've actually noted this in the um, Omega group more with more detail, is that I, I feel like we've um, we're entirely too centralized and we're entirely too uh, hierarchical, and to to actually claim that we're a DAO at this point, um, I, I don't think we're decentralized enough. I don't think so. I think what had what, if you look at the personal the misunderstanding is that we've got you know Griff who's basically the 800 pound gorilla in every crypto room he shows up in who has, you know, expressed a doubt in a person which has had a personal effect on me um, and limited my ability to participate and contribute to the groups that I was in. And that's a structural problem in the sense that, that we've grown really comfortable with, you know, him as a leader. And, and if you take a look at all centralized systems, this is what we do in, in all these different ways. We, we constantly aggregate power and, and social and we we go toward this hierarchy and there's a kind of thinking bias that we bring with us into these de decentralized things and i feel like we have to do things that actively subvert that particular question like liberating structures for example and i like um, jeremy and the gospel of change because he's literally an expert in agile and he's got a real facility with and he literally said to me the other day that he, he felt like if if uh, the Nazi party used liberating structures and the Holocaust never would have happened. And I feel like that's a very 
strong statement to say of how, you know, how, uh, how powerful it is this, these implicit biases are that you could take somebody with a, with a really good intention and then um, uh, it kind of cult of personality sort of grows up around things. And I've found that that's true with people talking to me because I'm Durgadas and I've been here a year and blah, blah, blah. And, and that happens with the individual stewards and that happens with, and so what I'm saying is, is that when I look at the ENS thing, I think there's some structural issues that, that took place there, things they forgot about. I think the same thing's happening in terms of us where we have to understand that there's going to always be this swinging pendulum between the individuals participating in the system, the culture and worldview, which then creates social systems. And that social system has a bounce back to it that we have to constantly be trying to figure out a way to, to mitigate the, the effects of and to understand more clearly um, what kind of effects it's having on the participants in the system. And I'm, just happen to be very emotionally connected to that right now <laughs> because of the thing that happened. And I feel like here I am talking about trust creation and all these different things all for, for a year, not knowing that there was actually some kind of asterisk next to my name in terms of trust. And, and it just, it's so jarring and so upsetting. And so, you know, that I think, how can this have happened? So I feel like, well, transparency failed me and, and, and the, the work groups all failed me and gravity failed me and, and, you know, all of these different things that we're all doing to try to prevent this kind of feeling. And here I am, <laughs> I'm like one of the most participatory people in this entire thing, you know, but then there's also other structural things that, that reveal the problem. There's a real distance between how many tech tokens one person is awarded versus how many I'm awarded. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, there's just, there are a bunch of, uh, uh, it's, it's very uh, representative. So if I put my hand up and say, now I'm a representative, now I'm a steward, then all kinds of extra stuff flows to me, almost by default, right. this hidden, you know, underlying thing. And I feel like um, uh, I'm not trying to gang up on things, but I, I feel like what, what I'd prefer to do to contrast with the way that we're doing things with ENS is to understand the underlying structural psychosocial aspects that, that led to you know, what, what ENS is uh, dealing with. And I think uh, what we're going to have to deal with later if we don't fix the underlying problem uh, right now. And I'm trying to take my personal thing sort of set aside my own sort of emotions about it and try to see how that, um, I'm sure there are other people in our system that are suffering under some kind of thing like this. If somebody who's as prominent in, in this community as me and who's as broad thinking and, and, you know, is, is, is suffering under this. I'm sure there's somebody else who's also doing it. And I kind of feel like maybe I want to say, may I not suffer in the same way. You know, there's a kind of Buddhist thinking. that was like, I don't, may uh, somebody else not suffer in the way that I'm suffering. And then it takes a, takes it away from you. So it takes away your suffering. If you can sort of wish that other people would not suffer under that same thing. And I think it's, it's implicit that we, if we're going to call ourselves a DAO, we, do we measure how decentralized we are? Do we measure how autonomous we are? And I, I don't feel like we actually are doing that. And, and, and we're falling back into the old centralized, semi-centralized systems of, of governance and, and thinking in terms of governing uh, instead of enabling. Like, so if we're going to constrain things, we're, we're thinking too often about governing constraints and not enough about enabling constraints. So if I'm going back to right. Kefin, um, so I just would like us to, as a, as a group, maybe examine that. And I can see that ENS su is suffering from that. I personally suffered a little emotionally and, and from a community standpoint from that right now. And I'm basically going to be probably talking about this all week, trying to figure out, is there something that we can do, you know? And so I hope that makes sense. Uh, did, did I, did, it does. is that cogent enough? Uh, for you? <laughs> it does. Uh, and I want to add to two things. The first is acknowledge what you just said. Um, thank you for the honesty and bringing this to the table. Otherwise, in, I think um, a lot of people tend to shy about this topic or shy about this personal aspect of it. So thank you for your vulnerability on this. Secondly, I hear you and um, I wrote some notes that we'll, I will probably revisit again. And at least from the community that's working group, try to see if there is a way for us to scan these kind of uh, underlying feelings or uh, or overlaying feelings in people, 
that we can sort of create a some in a way to handle this uh, properly so we don't we don't wait a year um, or we don't wait six months or two months which we can tackle it in a way that it's positive for the community because for me it's about learning uh, learning about the situations and trying to um, yeah learning about the situation there is there is nothing else um, yes then yeah I do I also want to say I really appreciate how you've expressed this Jagadas and communicated one <laughs> uh, how you felt very well and two like the next thing is like so how do we fix it <laughs> like, and I already have ideas for fixing it and I would be very very glad to hear about and to work on some of them with you and I think the idea of like how decentralized are we is just such a great tool that every DAO should have in their toolkit to to stay aware of and keep checking so uh, thanks for for bringing the um, determination to make things better with you. Thank you, Tim. And um, I will pass it on to Lee <laughs> if you have something to comment on the question that we have today. We don't have much time, uh, so I will ask uh, Gustavo and Limi, who are to left, to answer the question. We we'll try to keep it a little bit short in between a minute and a minute and a half. So I pass it on to you, Lee. Thank you. Um, what is the question? The question is, um, the question is, how do we uh, handle our professional versus our personal life, and um, regarding the impact of um, of Brownlee and the ENS situation and his personal abuse affecting his professional life, and like, how do we handle this as a community, and how will you handle yourself, uh, how do you handle yourself in situations too? Yeah, thank you. And, and I'm, I'm glad I, I jumped on this call. I, I usually don't have this hour free. And um, it was very great to hear you, Durgadas. Thank you for sharing. And I, oh my God, I spent hours <laughs> in, in those groups yesterday and just in the <laughs> Twitter space, listening to everything, reflecting and, um, yeah, just really trying to not be judgmental, but also thinking of how things can affect people and the culture that we are trying to build. And, and I think um, I started to look and to rely on more and more on restorative justice as a, as a way to Kind of like we have advice process, but the opposite, you know, like whenever something happened, whenever something you did affected uh, certain people, I think there should be some type of advice when, when this effect happens. Like when people were affected by something you did, we should have some type of process in place where um, it puts it puts these people in communication. It, it creates some type of advice on how to move forward with the pain that was created. And I got very upset to see like so many people disregarding the, the, the hate speech. And I think this is something, maybe it's different from each one of us personally, but I have like 99% of my friends are, are queer and I I just always, I, I grew up in this environment and I've seen what hate speech can do to people. And I think it's like extremely unfortunate to see this being disregarded. Um, I don't know, even by people that I respect and that I like, I think this is a very delicate situation, you know, like how to not let people's opinions, um, people's opinions on other people's opinions affect your relationship with, with these people. So um, I've been trying to like think of solutions and I'm really happy that we're going to have this call with Lorelai tomorrow. Uh, to present ourselves as uh, conflict mediators and um, 
just exchange on like best practices. I think we are in a very unique situation in Web3 that there is enough people really wanting to make a change. And, and there is all of this concept clashing, right? Like privacy versus uh, exposure, like freedom of speech versus like um, not allowing hateful speech. And, and I think some, sorry if I'm taking too long, but I think some of those concepts have to be broken down. Like what is freedom? Like, are you really free when you're like, when you're taking the freedom of someone else to exist? Like, right. are you really being just like, are you just expressing yourself? Well, the power position that you hold with that expression could actually like take someone's lives out or like be so negatively impactful into people's lives. And, and this is already starting to happen. Like there's already people being uh, threatened by being trans like today, you know, like we see very quick the, the effect of hate speech. I, in my country, I see Brazil is the country that kills the most transsexual people in the world, yet the country which consumes most trans porn in the world. And this is such a, an indicator of like how this is so rooted in something else and that we should be talking about this. And I, and, and yeah, I think we have what it takes to create healthy communities. And I hope we can have those conversations more often. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Livy. Thank you, Livy. And I will pass it on to Gustavo. Thank you. Um, I'm actually, I have no idea what happened, but just hearing you guys, like I just can't imagine. And I'm now I'll, like, uh, I'll read about that later probably, but um, it seems to me that there's, uh, things that happen uh, that that you just need to work out how to be consistent uh, in terms of asking like how to separate your personal and, and your work life. I think there's a separation for me in terms of like dedicating time and just like, for example, my family, like giving me time to dedicate myself into something I need my full mind into. But that, that for me, that is like the only separation that exists between my personal and professional life. The other things uh, I think are mixed in terms of values, and I tend to try to be very consistent with those values in the things I engage into professionally. And I also am open and expect things not to work in an expected way. And, and, and it seems to me that these issues that you guys are talking about that happen have to do with that. Like maybe the community has an expectation, but maybe that expectation it's not completed and then everyone you know starts thinking in different ways or expressing things differently and i think there has to be an openness into trying to learn what happened and how to learn how to be more positive or or take something positive uh in 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 those interactions that start to to happen uh uh, uh get away from your expectations and so so yeah i don't know i i, I Again, I'm, I don't know what happened with the ENS issue no that you guys were mentioning, but, but, but yeah, that's my tech in it. So. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you so much, Gustavo. Um, Thank you. We, don't have, we, we, will, we will finish here with this section. Um, yesterday, if you have the time to listen to Alicia, it's still on. Uh, if you go to alicia.eth on Twitter, there are still on the tourist spaces that she held yesterday. I think it's really positive um, to hear that, to listen. I saw Lee that you were listening when I was also listening to it. <laughs> and I think there is this, for me to take, the thing that I took from that Twitter space is how many uh, queer, trans, black, it, all kind of people were demanding to have a space to speak. And to, there was like, and I, I, it came to my awareness like, oh wow, are we actually, are we actually, when we say we are radically open as a community, are we actually radically open? And how, in that openness, how do we handle different types of people who will join and not necessarily will be positive or bring positiveness to the space? But since we are radically open, 
like how do we handle these situations and how do we make this clear that there is a boundary of um, of respect and values and all this stuff. And I think uh, this, 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 these were my two takes out of this space. It's like, I have never seen these people um, speaking in our Discord. I have never seen uh, this problem. This, these people are in a very similar fashion topic related to us. So for me, that was really key to see how many people, how she facilitated this space for people. And she was just actively listening. Uh, and it was really respectful and it was really nice to have that space for everyone that uh, was clearly aiming for that. So that's it. Um, I send you to that Twitter if you want to take a look at that. Um, thank you. Thank so, you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, so we have a few things. We can uh, move fast on this. So I will uh, just give very briefly some updates, Tam, and then I pass it to you for uh, for tip, kills, and the community task proposals. Very few updates. We had a thing today with TA Academy uh, for improving the rewarding process. Uh, we came with some action items to accomplish. Uh, one of them is to try to pass them on to uh, K, some of the bot repositories so they can implement it. They love the guide. Uh, and they love the verification process they are having with the verification process, they're having issues. So they want sort of change the verification bot that they have. So um, so I reached out by by Beach. He could not attend today's call because of time constriction, but uh, the idea is that we can sort of pass it on some of the bots to um, the Discord, the Academy. And the second thing that was really important is we acknowledge that there is this kind of desire to collaborate and to make it more uh, the flow better in between the both communities, but something is like not blocking that and we are not actually uh, having a strong collaboration besides just participating on some other calls. Uh, so we decided to think about do uh, each of us, TEC Academy, sorry, the Academy and um, TEC thinking on how we can sort of foster action items that can engage with both communities. One of them coming from Angela was Angela suggested, hey, let's bring over some of your knowledge uh, from some of the stewards to come over to classes, to come over to the MAs, to share very, sp very specific expertise that could benefit TE uh, Academy. And then the one that I suggested was like, why don't someone from TE Academy comes once a week or once every two weeks or once a month to uh, bring some knowledge from uh, talking engineering to our Discord. So this a few formulas we thought about. And yeah, so you're welcome to, if you have any idea regarding how we can foster this relationship, you're more than welcome to share it on the Kimita's working group. And we aim for two weeks to have an update on this conversation. Uh, that's on that end. Um, we are not gonna talk about FAQ today. Because Just a quick Gideon question, is, is there is, any notes or is that, is there any notes from that conversation? Yes, they okay. have the notes because they were, uh, Patricia was the one taking the notes on, on that, so I can ask for her the notes. And, and then we are not going to talk about FAQ today because Gideon is in a meditation retreat, so send some nice vibes to Gideon. Mm -hmm. and, and then contributors agreement for everyone here who wants to collaborate or help, it could be guides, Malmanu, David, Jim, you're here. There is a, there is a draft for a contributor agreement on the agenda, um, it's just a draft. You can put any feedback that you would like to. And the idea is that we have this sorted out before uh, the end of February, I hope, and see if we are comfortable with that, if you would like to change something, if you would like to amend something. So feel free to provide feedback on this agreement of contributors. And these are my three updates. So I'll pass it to you now. <laughs> okay, and for this contributor agreement, what so this is the draft and then we'll get feedback and probably before the end of the month we can have this finalized right that's the idea okay awesome cool cool it looks really good i i had a look at it but speaking of this roles thing actually eduardo and i had a call with i'm going to share my screen now uh it is i believe livia who uh, initialized, initialized a conversation with uh, Deep Skills, which is sort of the sister organization or initiative of Deep Work. And um, we met with uh, 
Andre and Roshan. Kishore. Okay. <laughs> and yes. and Kishore. Um, and they shared with us some of the work that they've been doing in terms of onboarding. And we sort of had this initial conversation about, is this something that could be beneficial to the TEC? What would it look like? Uh, and there's two components to it. The first is that they build this sort of guide for people who are new to a community. Um, and so just basic things about how to find your ways around, um, how to apply for work. Uh, roles and responsibilities is, I think, the thing that I want to highlight which is, um, okay, so this is sort of a very uh, skeletal version, but um, they also shared the one that they did for Prime, uh, Prime DAO, specifically the Prime rating uh, product, and going through, let's see if I can find it, so uh, different skills, so if, uh, if we could, the idea is that um, one or two working groups perhaps could trial this out with skill deep skills and go through creating these different roles and how people could be onboarded into those roles, workflows for those roles, and um, really like sp the specifics of it. So this is something that uh, could be interesting in terms of like when people come into the TEC and they would want to be perhaps a TEC guide or a working coordination uh, working group coordination lead. Uh, there's a few roles that I could think of which would be interesting to start with immediately and then we could sort of, if we're satisfied with how it's going, expand uh, further roles in different working groups from there. So it was, it's an interesting first conversation. I think um, I could drop this link. I feel like these links are probably better. Let's see if that's the one works. Uh, so other people could take a look at how this works as well. Uh, deep skill, I'll drop this link uh, so you can sort of poke around and see how they do it. Um, I think the next step is going to be Andre will send a uh, kind of propo a proposal on um, like a sort of template proposal, so it's not specific for us, but a proposal for us to get an idea of what kind of scope of work and budget would be necessary for that. And then we could think about whether this is something Communitas would want to, uh, to do. Uh, so that, that was very interesting. And if you don't need no deep skills in deep work, they've been doing, um, they've been working on kind of match skill matching in the, uh, in the DAO space for quite a while now. And they've come up with some very interesting um, uh, tools. This is just a Figma, but there is uh, something that they are building an MVP of, so it's very, very early. And it is essentially a way to look at different skills uh, to be rated on skills that you've done, that you've, uh, that you've done for a particular working group and to also get paid for the tasks that you do for for a particular group so i guess i can't really go through this so much but the the idea is that this is actually something where you would be able to um have like it would be really ecosystem wide so it'd be multiple DAOs, and they'd have all of these sort of skills really um you know, uniformed in the same way, so standardized in the same way, and people can come and then sort of get a kind of confirmation of their skills and their work across multiple DAOs if it's one skill that they want to apply across multiple DAOs or uh, skills that they want to apply in, uh, in one DAO. So there's, I, I can't get past this one, and we went further in it. Uh, oh, here, uh, let's go fast through there. So this idea, this idea is actually super interesting. It's really early, so it's too early for us to even use it. But um, it has some really compelling ideas for how people's skills can be matched across different DAOs. So that was it. I don't know if anyone has any questions or thoughts about that. Okay. And so... That's really cool. <laughs> 
This can be, I mean, I think this can be amazing for onboarding into DAO space. Like I'm a writer, here's all the writing jobs across all the DAOs. And then somebody can like build a reputation for themselves. I mean, not, not Upwork, right? But you could imagine it's a kind of Upwork where the more jobs you get, the more jobs you get because you're developing a reputation as somebody who delivers quality and, um, and right. is, you know, reliable and versus... So they're actually, they're working with a group called Affinity now, which is Kishore, the company that Kishore represents. And um, that company is really uh, focused on identity. You could see how like the identity and then the skills set would have to go, would go nicely together. Uh, so I think that there's, there's bigger work that they're going to be doing, but this is just the sort of the vision for where they're going with it. And it'd be very interesting for us to sort of, um, so first of all, this would just be amazing documentation for us to like to sit and think about the different roles and then make it very accessible for people joining into the TEC to be able to see what roles they want to, uh, to pick up, what roles are available, <laughs> what matches their skill set, and then how they can go about sort of applying for that role and, and being eligible for that role. And then when the MVP of this is available, it's actually another tool that we could use to be able to, I mean, I sort of think of this as like boardroom with all the governance voting. This is like the, 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 the you know, ta the bounty skill matching for all the DAOs everywhere. Uh, could, could, it could grow into something like that. Any other thoughts or ideas anyone wants to share? I dropped the links in here. I didn't drop the Figma. I'm not sure if it's open. Um, and it's sort of just not, not, totally fine, not totally final yet. But have a look at some of this documentation for the, um, the sort of like welcome to an organization. And then the next thing is our Communitas Working Group three-month funding. So the Stewards Working Group proposal passed over the weekend. Yay! Uh, so I jumped in here to this proposal, but we still need more votes for it to uh, for it to pass. So if you do have votes and you haven't yet voted for it, I would definitely encourage people to vote for Communitas. Otherwise, uh, we also have to get out and ask individuals uh, that we know are, uh, whose funding, whose votes have become um, eligible since the Stewards Working Group passed to jump into Communitas as well. And that's it. That's the two things that I have. Thank you, Tim. Uh, do you have something to ask or add, Lily? Yeah, I just had a question about the uh, deep work thing. Uh, how, what, what, what happens if like many people apply for the same bounty? Does it have like one person gets it first, the first to apply? I don't think it works like that. I think you then have to select the person who will do it. But we didn't go into yeah. those details, but I would imagine it would be more like you're applying for a position and other. Like a yeah, skill yeah, they are sort of building uh, like a like a skill based and work work and skill based reputation uh, dashboard that can help sort of you know uh, this process. Um, so I think we are I think we are really at the beginning of this kind of figuring it out for them and for both for us how we are gonna sort of see it and work it out. But I think. Just being in, in touch with them and what they are developing is really interesting for us, regardless of how that interaction would look. Yeah, and Andre has been doing this for a very long time. I know he's worked with many different groups. Um, he works very closely with Block Science on sort of, you know, UX for complex systems. <laughs> His ETH ETH CC talk was probably my favorite talk at ETH CC because it was really about sort of design and UX and like how to facilitate people who are coming in. It was really focused on like people coming into the space and the ways that we can actually, um, you know, match people with meaningful work in the space versus kind of what we're doing now, which is like, we hope you can be like, we'll find something, you know, it just, it feels um, very, it's still very haphazard because DAOs are still so new, but I think yeah. that 
this is this is sort of going to be like the very hot I don't know higher level version of it. They were also super interested in praise. They were just like, why? When? When can yeah. we use it? Can we install it today? We want to get going. <laughs> and uh, part of the meeting was monopolized with their interest in like when they can start using praise. And Eduardo and I were like, we were the second best people to talk about this. You know, the people you really want, if you can get, is Livia and Vi. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, we are in the last five minutes, six minutes of the call. Uh, we do this little exercise every two weeks of asking everyone, how are you really, how are you? And this is how we end this call. So, we have 45 seconds, more or less, each one. Um, so I will pass it on after I, I do my part. How am I? I'm good. Um, I feel I'm in a very productive state at the moment. Um, and I'm quite curious to see how things will unfold in general, funding proposals, DNS, just how the state of the community in many communities is and how people are tackling new things. And it affects my personal life too because I have less time. So it's peculiar. Uh, I pass it on to David. Hey folks, um, how am I? I am fabulous. Weather has been nice. Um, unlike the constant rain we get in the Pacific Northwest, we've had uh, some warm weather and lovely sunny days. So I've been able to get to the dog park and that just feels great. Um, not to mention the incredible um, emotional and compassionate conversations happening all day yesterday. Uh, regarding sensitivity in the space and uh, inclusivity and um so i'm good yeah i'm really good um with that um i'm pretty stoked about the future of communitas and guides i gotta admit also uh even as a trainee i'll pass it on to gene thanks thanks david yeah honestly i'm pretty tired Tired and uh, somewhat on a nice edge in terms of being able to um, participate uh, everywhere fully how I'd like to. I'm just questioning the logic that I'm, I'm using and, and uh, the the degree to which I, I can spread myself uh, in as many places as I feel like I, I want to be and, and so then prioritizing which if I, if I can't then do that, which, which would be one, two, three, and so on. I'm, I'm open to suggestions if anybody had any uh, insight or feedback, multiple points. I'm tired and up in the air, to be honest. And that's to uh, Dennis. Thanks, Gene. Um, good. I had a good weekend. Got out, um, got some energy out, did some climb and big day yesterday. Um, was not as engaged in TEC last week. Um, and I think it's going to be a slower week this week because of all Heath Denver. Maybe that's next. But um, yeah, I'm excited to. Uh, there, there's some things that I want to do just to kind of get off my my list and and um, I'm excited about kind of diving into those things this week so yeah I'm, I'm doing well thanks uh, do you want to uh, I'll pass it to Gustavo hey um, I, I'm not sure what, what what you guys are talking about now <laughs> No, we just ask, we have 45 seconds. Uh, we just ask, how are you? But like, really, how are you? Oh, well, today is a, is a free day in Mexico, a holiday, actually, um, uh, February uh, 5th. So it's a free day for me. Uh, the weekend was really, really nice. And yeah, I'm also, again, like I'm fairly new to all the space. So I'm, again, uh, joining most of the meetings I can just to learn the most I can and trying to find my place in the token engineering comments and trying to help as much as I can. So 
So yeah, everything looks good for me. So that, thank you. Thank you, and I pass it on to Lily. Thanks. I'm feeling a little anxious. I just ate a cold bar of chocolate in two minutes uh, <laughs> before this call, and it just feels like there is so much to do and like things that require a lot of focus and attention. And then when I feel like I need to focus a lot, I get very anxious and don't focus. And then that makes me more anxious. So yeah, trying to do that. Wow. And I'll pass to you, bye. Little bit time. Uh, my slide writer has been really worn over the place. This is my book. One day, sleep one hour, some days, sleep 12 hours. So, pretty sort of do all that. Uh, and yeah, so that's pretty much it. Can pass it to my friend. My friend has to pass. Thanks, bye. Uh, just as Libya. <laughs> Very similar. Uh, a lot of anxiety, but mainly because there's a lot to do, and you know. Uh, sometimes you don't know where to start, to start and where to focus, and that creates more anxiety, and it's a never-ending cycle, yeah. a spiraling one. Um, but at the same time, I feel good that, that I do have the energy to uh, put things straight and start doing new stuff and make it better every day. So that's a, that's a good vibe to start the, the week. Um, I'll pass it to Durgadas. Yeah, so um, I'm uh, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling a bit um, just in my personal life, and then um, I was a little blindsided by this uh, thing in the TEC, so um, you know that I talked about a little bit. So. Um, but yeah, I think um, I feel like uh, I'm proud of myself for responding to those stresses in a way that meets my own values and tries to, um, you know, remain compassionate to everyone um, at the same time. So, you know, and I'm, I have to stay in that space because if I don't remain compassionate to myself, then I won't be. So at least that's to that's else. my rundown um, um, either. So. You know that's that's kind of a fight, you know, internally sometimes but, uh, with yourself. So, um, so yeah, I got I got a, a bit of stress, uh, you know, but I am also just it's not about getting things done, but it's more just emotional uh, and relational weight uh, that's happening right now. So, thank you. I'm not and sure if pass it to you. Don't worry. Would you like to pass it off, my money? Yeah, sure. Um, okay, cool. It's a little dark, but um, yeah, I, I, I feel like it was like, like that Beatles song, uh, Getting Better. Uh, that, that That's how it yeah. was feeling. Um, just hitting a pace and getting a lot of the issues that I've had some issues for a long time. Sorry, Tam. Uh, I'm closing them down, uh, finishing them. But then yesterday something happened around a hotspot mistake uh, with the wrong address and that thing was just like, it was like, it was like Achilles shooting like a nuclear arrow onto its heel by itself. Like it was so weird that, that, that thing. Um, but now uh, it, it's, it's weird. I hope nothing serious, no, no serious consequences come out of it. Um, so, yeah, a little, uh, a little preoccupied by that, but other than that, uh, things have been getting better. Uh, and yeah, I'll pass it back to you, Eddie. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, it has been a very peculiar call, but a very light one. I really like this one. Uh, thank you so much for the time. I hope you have a nice Monday and all of you handling anxiety. Breathing. I know. <laughs> I know we're over, but I just wanted to say I didn't have a chance, so I just want to go too. And I'm sorry oh, we're running sorry. over. Um, I just want to say I've seen so much like destructive behavior uh, intentionally, and I've seen so much admirable behavior 
And it's like, I find myself always like moving to the people who are doing the admirable things and just respecting and sometimes just being awed by the people who, who do it. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to say that. I think that there's, there's been a lot going on and it's just been very heavy, but when people hold their own and as, as Durgadas was saying, like treat themselves with respect and others with respect, I think that's, um, I don't know, it's a, a, you know, a, a role that we should follow, a model that we should follow. Anyways, I'll thank you. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a lovely Monday. See you soon. Thank you. Thank Bye you. Everyone. Bye. Thank you.